lights camera action it's a capture of actions feelings moods and brings them to your senses and sensibilities it strips society of its facade and brings its nuances bare to the mind to criticize it is storytelling not only by the fireside but by the machines it is filmmaking mind-bending to say the least the art that makes the mind malleable to the heat of its stories be it true or fiction filmmaking is technically the process by which a motion picture is produced it is explained as the direction of production of films for any flat panel or area on any electronic device be it cinema television computers or even smartphones frenchman louis Emile augustin le prince is credited as the father of cinematography he was the inventor of the first motion picture camera in 1888 his invention was more advanced than the likes of william freeze grain and was worth donisthorpe they were british inventors who were also professional photographers who invented some but not fully developed cameras thoroughly that's that's where we got the name film celluloid the material is a film celluloid is that it's like photography taking the pictures of a human being in those our old system you've got a film as a material which you put into the camera you snap it you have to go and print it at a laboratory with chemicals get a negative out of it before you can print it on the paper to get the picture for the person you took the picture from in movies it was the same at that time the film material is also in that form after shooting the film exposing it you have to take the whole negative to the laboratory wash process and get the negative before you can paint a positive from the negative before you can put it into a cinema projector to screen it the art of filmmaking has traveled the shores of its original homes to all parts of the world including africa and to a narrow extent ghana this is the story of the evolution of filmmaking in ghana how it has changed with the philosophy, technology, and storytelling through the minds behind the industry. But before then, let's go way back, back into time. Like the wolf in sheep's clothing, the introduction of filmmaking in the Gold Coast poured through the colonial private hands in the 1920s with the opening of cinemas in the urban areas. It was a form of entertainment for the colonial elites. However, the colonialists also had a vested interest in ensuring that the Africans of the Gold Coast saw their role as subjects of the British crown as paramount. To achieve this, one of the tools they successfully used was cinema. I have arranged for the mass education lorry to come here for this lesson. Please stand here. That is the driver. That is the driver's mate. Pay your fares. Passengers must pay fares. If a lorry is not available, an arrangement of benches will do instead. Please sit down. Mm. 
Notices of all sorts can be written with chalk on boards so that they can be changed for each lesson. Before the Second World War, they produced films that enticed Africans to enlist in the military with promises of better remuneration after the war. However, in 1948, after the Second World War, in their usual way of making film to pass on messages and to make themselves look superior, they produced films that portrayed them as the frontier force. And African soldiers were left out, who, as a matter of fact, formed the major part of the frontier force. This, alongside other economic factors and promises, reneged on, angered the soldiers, and they revolted on the 28th February 1948, which unfortunately led to the death of three soldiers, Sergeant Ajete, Corporal Atipo, and Private Udati Lanti. He left Kusuala Tamanche, in Kwababon. He joined and organized the looting, you know, it was the looting in the shops, which often spread to the regions where they were being behind. So it was a very frightening sight. You know, and we came from school to see, we saw. This was 1948. We were then in to Sioux Island. And we saw it was very frightening. They went on for some time on, until it was controlled. Then same thing started happening after the death of um, the two soldiers. In trying to make amends, the colonialists decided to restructure some of their policies and actions. One of the main recommendations was to build a film school in Accra to serve the West African territories. It was to train Africans to make films within the colonies for themselves. There were changes in the colonial setup. And a decision, a decision was taken that the colonial government would set up a film school. It was part of it. The colonial government would set up a film school, West, a West African film school, to train West Africans how to make, how to shoot films. It was a decision after the, that revolt. But to me, uh, later on, what I saw during my history in the filmmaking was that the, the, the reporters who were sent to the various, uh, to the various countries, various countries outside the colonial headquarters to film, they were known to them. And it was discovered that they were not speaking the truth. They were not presenting the truth. So that was why, the, you know, um, the colonial government decided to set up, to set up a film school to train the locals to shoot, to, to shoot their own films, to shoot their films so, so that they could see the other side of it too. And uh, it, was start, it started with Three Nigerians, three Ghanaians, three Nigerians, Fajamesi, Utigba, and Rauna. And then the Ghana side, we have Samaite, Fenuku, and Bobo Kanta. They later changed the name to Gold Coast Film Unit. The West African Film School had metamorphosed to the Gold Coast Film Unit because they were training, they had enough graduates. So they changed from the film school to the Goku Film Unit. And while the, at the Goku Film level, they were still training people back on the job. So the school was, yeah, the school changed to the Goku Film Unit, which became the Ghana Film Unit. So we've been attending cinema, Rex, Ra. Riga, you know, those were the old cinemas, mm -hmm. particularly Rex. We were going to Rex, see King Kong and all those films. So I was a cinema fan, so I said, oh, yeah, I should go and learn filmmaking. So I was admitted in 1954. That was how I went in there. 
Sean Graham was the director of the Gold Coast Film Unit. Sean Graham, he was in charge of the Gold Coast Film Unit. The colonial, sent, the colonial government sent him to come and train to be the principal. They call it the principal. To be the director of the, of, the, of the film school. And then we had Peter Hall, the sound man, Knight, uh, George Nova, the head camera. And all the departments were headed by whites. At this time, films made were more educational on payments of taxes, British etiquette, and some feature films such as The Boy Kumaseinu and more. A sand wife lives a happy and contented life, but a wife without a house makes much trouble for her spouse. Brother, take advice from me if you want to live peacefully. Do let me step in, son, in the story I will tell. Build a house and build it, we can see you build it well. Own your home and love your wife. You'll taste happiness all your life. Mr. Mason, there in your little build no house at all. For his nephew took his money and then spent it all. Now his house is all but done. Let me tell you how it all began. And it was a river of no return. I, I liked it. At that time, I was preparing myself to uh, my my aim was to do pharmacy at the Kwame Kuma University, uh, and, uh, and I changed my mind. I loved it was I loved the creative work, so I changed my mind and got stuck. And that's how I became a film a film man. To help and guide them, give them strength and fortitude. For their way into the new world is set about with snares and pitfalls which can cause them great, great suffering if they stray too far from the old ways. If they stray too far, too soon. Thus the past out of its wisdom, spoke to the future and its longings. Sail bravely into the new, but let the weight of your craft be gentle. Let your past remain upright and proud until we build our ships of the same timber and launch them with our common hopes. gained independence in 1957. Knowing the power of film, when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah won independence for Ghana, he decided to use film to change the narrative and to enhance the African and her pride. He then restructured the whole Gold Coast Film Unit into Ghana Film Industry Corporation and engaged the services of Sean Graham. They were still there. You see, so uh, there were certain produ productions which were doing during the Gokos film unit, so Ghana film unit, so Ghana film it, 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 it was a continuous job. So Sean Graham was the director and during his time, the, 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 the Ghana film unit, the Ghana film corporation, it was a continuous job. You know, like Boy Kumasenu and all the we started doing the colonial days. Those things were started doing the colonial days, but we, they, we continued. The Ghana, go, Ghana Film Louvre. Uh, I'm a new child. Mr. Mason built the house. 
and all those productions, which were all directed by Sean Graham. Then, after our independence, after some time, uh, they decided to leave. Uh -huh. Then, Sean Graham stayed on for a period because the, the truth is that the colonial government sacked Sean Graham. Oh, they, they, sacked, him. they sacked him because he, he was sent with a vision Fishing from the, the colonial master that he should train the people to make films in our ways to portray themselves to be seen to cut matters short. The colonial government wanted to see how we were responding to the rule from the African point of view to the camera. See, but when Sean came, he was, he was deeply taught by our cultural values. So he started making films about Ghana. Yeah. The boy comes to Mr. Mesa Bisa House and all those things were telling the Ghanaian story, were helping the uh, Ghanaian to grow, you know, to move on in life. You know, to be independent, this is sort of. You see, so he was sacked for misapplying the application of responsibility. He was misapplying the colonial strategy. See? So he was sacked. But and he stayed on for some few years and then left. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah trained some Ghanaians abroad to come back and help in telling the African story the right way. Among the beneficiaries of the training program were some of Africa's foremost cinematographers like Kenan Powell. I was sent to Germany in 1961 by Kwame Nkrumah in those days. Uh, I was intended to go and study uh, techniques. We call it fine techniques. Te so I should have become a technician, you know. Uh, when I say fine techniques, dealing with how cameras are built, how small, small watches and all these measuring instruments are built. We group all of them in that category. We call it fine mechanic. Yeah. So, in Germany in those days, as an African, I didn't I haven't had any experience about the technical setup, build-ups of instruments. So they first uh, gave me the chance to go into uh, camera production company to learn how camera is built, the whole setup from A to Z, how it is used, and what comes out of it. So on the way, I said, no. I wanted to be a technician, but now that I've seen what camera does, I would like to change my profession and use the camera to tell stories, to make films, so that uh, I can go back as a filmmaker. Nkrumah's vision in the establishment of the GFIC was to use indigenous Ghanaian films to turn around the negative impact of the films made by the colonial government and also to build self-reliance and to restore the pride of the Ghanaian and to a large extent the African. Then Kwame Kuma restructured the whole uh, 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 film unit Build studios, build sound recording, please, and uh, uh, modernize, modernize the whole thing. 
and became the Ghana Film Industry Corporation. There were some few whites who came, but they didn't stay long until the whole thing was Africanized. And uh, Kofi Awuna, Professor Kofi Awuna, was the first managing, African Ghana managing director of the restructured Ghana Film Industry Corporation. To cover newsreels and uh, document, you know, big events and so forth and so on. And we did that, and sometimes it was processed and sent to GBC by 1965 when television was established. By the late 1960s, it had produced more than 150 feature and documentary films. Election time, especially GBC. We made films for GBC to tell the world what they have done. Alas, in Kumatopo, the film industry took a nose dive due to ill attention which was the beginning of the near end of the industry, lurking for time to nigh. In our next episode, we look at how the overthrow of Nkrumah affected the industry, the establishment of NAFTI, the introduction of video and its travels, and the sale of the Ghana film industry. Make a date. Lolo, I am Lolo.